Sexual abuse is never innocent, justifiable or right. And yet the unending horror and scandal of sexual abuse in church-related contexts remains. In this video, Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand looks at the impacts it has on today's society, both inside and outside of the church. If sexual abuse was an Olympic event, then I'm sure that the Catholic Church would make a clean sweep of the podium, regardless of what category that they'd be in. No other organisation can even come close, but the sad thing is, other Christian organisations are trying. We've heard of the cover-ups in the Pentecostal Church like Hillsong, many evangelical churches in the USA. Closer to home, we have the West Coast Commune, Gloria Vale, and now shock horror, Jehovah's Witnesses, covering up 11 pedophiles who walk freely amongst the children of believers. Now, these scandals continue to make headline news. Every organisation buries their heads in the sand and just hopes it goes away. We've seen that from the Catholics for years. Jehovah's Witnesses states its position is that it abhors child sexual abuse and that the incidence of this crime among Jehovah's Witnesses is rare. Now, this may be why the organisation sought leave not to be included in the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Abuse by seeking a judicial review and High Court declaration that the Church doesn't assume responsibility for the care of children, young people or vulnerable people. And yet, here we are, with a scandal in this organisation, and it's in the news with allegations of cover-ups where it's been reported by both the New Zealand Herald and Radio New Zealand. A Jehovah's Witness elder claims he was told to destroy confidential church documents, including those relating to child sex abuse cases. Now, the siege mentality only makes the scandals and the claims even more pronounced. But is it just not all about sex? It's bad business practices and exploitation when it comes to abuse, which we've seen from the Arise megachurch recently. Then there's the media's obsession with making everything that Brian Tamaki's Destiny Church does as cultish and bizarre. But back to the sex. And we acknowledge that sexual abuse has happened in the confines of Christianity, and it still happens in a vast range of contexts all around the world. You know, it happens in families, neighbourhoods, schools, institutions, workplaces, clubs and sports, in armed forces and in wars. July saw the end of a seven-year-long independent inquiry into child sexual abuse in Britain, concluded by publishing its final report. Among the horrifying accounts are plenty from those who suffered as the result of hands on vicars and priests and pastors, bishops and monks. An investigation by the Associated Press in the US claimed nearly 1,700 priests and other clergy members that the Roman Catholic Church considers credibly accused of child sexual abuse are living under the radar with little to no oversight from religious authorities or law. Well, here in New Zealand, the Crime and Victims Survey from the Ministry of Justice reveals the situation is still business as usual, where almost 30% of New Zealand adults experience intimate partner violence or sexual violence at some point in their life, with women three times more likely to experience sexual violence than men. Rather interesting that 90% of all crimes like this go unreported. Well, can I suggest, though, that holding inquiries is one thing, but doesn't stop the abuse from happening. But what can be done? The Brits are looking at an, the introduction of a new law which would see mandatory reporting. This new law would create criminal penalties for everyone in a designated position, mostly those working with children or in a position of trust who becomes aware of child abuse and doesn't report it to the police. It has long been a demand from victims groups and many children's charities, but has also been resisted by some within the church, especially traditions which value the historic confidentiality of the confession. Whatever laws are brought into place to protect the victims, I'm sure everybody would support it. But what can we do as an individual? 
Understand that sexual abuse reflects not just lustfulness, but also our dark human capacities for selfishness, delusion, exploitation, domination, violence and deceit. It's a glaring manifestation of our human sinfulness. Sexual abuse is never innocent, justifiable or right. It almost always leaves an enduring legacy of great harm. It is utterly tragic that considerable sex abuse has clearly taken some place in some Christian churches, church-going families and church-run institutions such as boarding schools and orphanages. Sexual abuse is always 100% wrong, but for it to happen in a church-related context is doubly appalling and shameful because it goes against everything Christian faith stands for, including God's calls to love, mercy, holiness of heart and mind, and integrity and renewal in Christ. These scandalous and inexcusable failings of some continue to bring huge reputational harm upon the church at large. So my friends, deplore what has happened. Empathise with and pray for those who have been victims. Be compassionate. Support justice. Be vigilant. Ensure our churches have very robust systems to help protect everyone from harm. Disciple our people well and be determined to follow Christ in love, integrity and purity.